great. And so, yeah, today we're going to start by talking about this new free plugin that I've come across online um, on GitHub, actually, and it's a free media pipe plugin for touch designer. Um, it looks like a lot of people um, it looks like a lot of people are increasingly interested in the kind of like key ingredients of a motion capture tool and um, most people are trying to learn like calibration, solving, um, retargeting themselves now. So we're getting to the kind of more core, the, the core of motion capture tools. And I find that quite interesting because me, myself included, I've also been thinking about um, what really makes up a motion capture software or tool and how can we just make that uh, more customized and personalized to our use cases. And so this is a really, really useful, because if those of you who are new to MediaPipe, it is, a, it is essentially like a model that comes with lots of features and it's made by Google. Um, also comes with face tracking, um, which detects facial landmarks um, hand tracking, pose tracking. So it came from post estimation and then they also started building like landmarks on it. Then it also comes with object tracking. So um, if I put my phone above here, um, I, think, I think in object tracking, it then, it then also shows phone sometimes. Um, it's getting that. Ooh a bit a bit of a cell phone in the middle so um with just one media pipe we're working with so many different things at the same time i'm 97 yeah i'm 97 percent a person 96 now it's going down um but but it is great to know that you can just do you can just use this model super easily and have access to it without needing to script anything and um and this is really lovely for me because i've been wanting to do research in media pipe for ages and finally i get to access um stuff like this this is super interesting i'm not even wearing a fur coat at the moment it's just a hoodie but I've got all these image categorization and classification in the image itself so super interesting curious to know i actually don't know what an abaya is um but no pajama mask none of these but super exciting to have data to work with in real time and that also makes potentially um um kind of like real-time interactions really interesting so let's say if i'm not actually doing serious um serious mocap and it has to uh, be targeted and fitted to an avatar i could use something like uh, face tracking get significant landmarks maybe or post tracking use these points to kind of like um uh in to create sphere instances in 3d space that could be quite fun or i can use these to bop around um i've always had this idea that we're gonna do um image segmentation or background se segmentation and make amazing filters for that at off world and so one of my dreams was to kind of create so if you can see here this is my pose and i'm just moving around um but to use this as colliders um in a background segmentation so like the foreground is still my body um and then the background could be an unreal environment where I get to have interactions with the background. And it's just it's just like a next level kind of filter in a way. Um, and it also comes with this amazing face filter example. So um, I've been using stable diffusion alongside this. So I've been running this stable diffusion node that allows me to kind of um, get texture to feed to feed in an image input and using image to image to kind of replace this kind of mask in the middle so i can show you what i've been doing earlier today it's very silly um but i've been working on something like this is quite this is quite weird so i can show you this just opening that up an image as well okay Hang on now.
So there's a bit of latency because I'm moving around um, and stable diffusion takes a while to catch up. Um, but I'm basically feeding a face mask to stable diffusion and it'll generate an image based on that. But I'm using like image segmentation as well. So it's got like my body kind of like silhouette. Um, and I just thought it's a very interesting way of like thinking about 2D VTubing nowadays without even having to use Unreal. But obviously the goal is to do that. Um, the goal, maybe later in this session, we could play around with sending um, this media pipe information. I would really try it. I would really love to use um, this data. It looks really interesting for a 3D environment um, or face tracking. Obviously, we can overlay things um, we can overlay things like eyes, eye, position of eyes, nose and mouth to create, um, to kind of like rig a character really. Um, let's see, transformation matrix. Okay, these are all just, just looking at what kind of information I can get from this. We get blend shapes, great. So basically if we get blend shapes, we can just send this, send blend shapes into, uh, we can send blend shapes via OSC and then we can then take it in uh, into Unreal. I'm hoping that's the case. Okay, actually no, I haven't looked at this yet. But yeah, I'm just going to show you where I've downloaded this amazing thing. Um, so I was watching this YouTube video from Torin Blankensmith and um, think they've created alongside there was another creator behind this but this is the github page to download the media pipe touch designer plugin as you can see here it comes with face hand pose object tracking as well as a face detector and you can use this to to do many things you can use this to um, create a virtual webcam, you can spout out to Unreal, you can also NDI to Unreal in um, in uh, Touch Designer, so there's quite a lot of things to do once it's integrated into this tool, um, so that's really really fun. So the second tool that I really wanted to introduce everyone is called Media Pipe for You, so if we're, we're if we're not even bothered to think about media pipe um as the standalone um thing that sits independently out of unreal engine um we have um i believe a chinese developer his name is anders xiao he's created this media pipe plugin that's directly integrating your webcam inside unreal and all of that is done inside Unreal so that you don't actually have to do any communications with Unreal via OSC. And that, in my opinion, does work quite well. The reason for that is um, if because um, just continuing on our last conversation from last week, we've noticed that the VMC receiver is the FPS killer, right? So with that in mind, I feel like not having to communicate with Unreal is a pretty good is a pretty good deal. So I think I managed to make this work with my current blueprints, but I've done this a month ago, so I have to refresh my memory on that. Um, if you're interested, feel free to watch his video tutorials. Don't remember if they're that easy. It is not really it's closed source and it's not really open source for um it's not really open source, but it's possible that we get a license replaced every month, I believe. And that gets us, yeah, there's a free edition and commercial edition. They must, have, they must have changed that not too long ago. This is in Chinese. How do I change it to English? Uh, great. So yeah, now there there is this kind of like commercial versus free option but there is the f um there is a license file to download where you can replace the license and this media pipe for you will um 
will just work. So I believe what we're going to do is try to locate this license. Um, try to locate this license in the GitHub. I'm going to look for this license to make it work. Free license file discussion over here. So this license will expire ju uh, on June 26, which is amazing. This just means that you can use it until like for three months. Pretty solid. I'm going to wait for this to download and then replace this. And I'll be able to show you. This is a project I've created um, previously based on, based on our VTuber project. And I followed the, I'm not going to go into too much of the workflow today because I just feel like um, these are things just to follow the documentation and kind of get it right. But I can show you um, super quickly how it works. So I've just created a media, um, I've just inst uh, installed the plugin, enabled it, and then put in the required components, which are media pipe components, as well as the media pipe face link actor. Then we'll have to go into project settings, I believe going into media pipe for you plugin and updating updating the license file over here so it should be done now nice and that's this is the file so just need to extract all nice this is where it is just gonna replace this here for a second oh no that's so noisy um, and open great so this should be working now hopefully i'm gonna give it a try but i haven't looked at it properly um so I might need to set this up really quickly so from what i remember i just need to i think that's pretty much it i don't remember what else it's supposed to do i think maybe set up Created an animation blueprint to work with it. So let's have a quick look at the documentation. I think it wasn't too hard. Um, motion capture. Uh, my screen very quickly for English. Oh, probably know why. I think I've enabled because in um in Touch Designer I've enabled my webcam, so it's unable to get um. <laughs> so now I'm using now I'm using um the character for new media pipe in Touch Designer. which then means that I can free this up for my webcam. Motion capture. Oh, 
that starts with where the Google translates so long. Um, So weird. Um, let's just watch it in Chinese and see what it's like. So the five steps are to install the plugin, uh, create a character that um that can communicate with media pipe then to install um motion capture it says here to set up motion capture use ground ik so that i believe um this is solving um solving ground level and then this is kind of like blend shape or expression capture really wanted to show how this would work but it's not really doing anything why is it remember how i've done it last time with video display mm. <laughs> the best way is to switch this off for a second and then maybe I'll restart media pipe so that it knows that um, I have a kind of webcam pre webcam to use seems like most of my videos aren't working for some reason but UE tools um, movements and expressions Stuff with development, blueprint, blah blah blah. Um, how do I start my two streamer yet? Yeah, also done that. I've not installed the plugin. Have two streamer. Oh. From that created an animation blueprint. Have time components. Mm, okay, let's give it a try again. If not, let's just move on to the next part because I think that will be more fun. Media pipe holistic. Um, we have something called static image source or G streamer image pool. Holistic component. gonna try yay okay cool um now my webcam is blinking so it means that um it's registering my it's registering 
my body. <laughs> and this is how it works. It is really funny. Um, so one thing I've noticed is that media pipe is um has this uh tendency to lean forward. That's because calibration isn't done yet. So um this is a known issue across all solutions based on media pipe. So what we need to do is basically perform calibration um and ideally some of them will make it work but maybe this is not the case um for this tool i'll have to figure out how to kind of solve it um solve it properly but um as you can see here it's a very quick way and to be honest might be better than xr animator um workflow but it does have an interesting it does have an interesting feel to it <laughs> um so another thing i haven't fixed properly is the ground ik so now i'm trying to slide away from the camera and i'm moving across my frame and it's floating a bit um and we're using something called ground ik to i think you, it is like a ray casting technique to draw to cast rays onto the ground and then it fixes the feet onto the ground um so i think that's one of the techniques the developer has used to ground the character when you're moving around the frame as you can see here i'm really surfboarding the whole time um but yeah um this is this is what um how it works at the moment i'm pretty sure there is a face link uh character as well but i haven't gotten too far looking at it just yet um yeah currently nothing's linked at the moment and uh, there must be yeah there must be a way to kind of work around it so if we go with that at the moment i'm just going to add a second layer to touch designer so the touch designer file we're playing with show you what we can do kind of connecting unreal engine using you can use like a viewport capture and then send that as a virtual webcam maybe if that works give it a try viewport capture And then stream in the title and then send them. Oh, oops, too heavy. I'm going to do a restart. Okay. give it a final push um but yeah i can't wait to see what you guys have been doing because i've just been stuck on the media pipe world for a while um kind of doing different types of research here as well but yeah um i'd love to know if you tried if you tried other tools that are based on nvidia maybe um that could be quite fun to look at So I'm going to move around the Cinecam. Recent touch designer. Mm -hmm. This should give us a pretty weird kind of con um, connection between a virtual human character and some kind of like double mocap thing.
And I think we can complicate this by creating an OSC server to receive information from here, but might might kill it. Um, might kill my computer. So it's just loading at the moment. I believe um this will work very soon. Nice. So now we've got our media pipe working um, with a virtual webcam output. Obviously, quite heavy, not going to lie. So it will take a while and then all the overlays will start happening. This is pretty cute. So just so now we can have a look at what information we're going to get with face tracking. Probably barely anything at the moment. Hand tracking. Yeah, there's mostly post tracking that's getting there. Object tracking has 50 something percent confidence for, for a person. And face detector, not quite there as well. Have a look at image. <laughs> we have match tick, uh, match stick, chain, hook, and chime. Interesting. Cool. So yeah, I'm going to then maybe create um communicate with my other project because it's a bit faster, but. Uh, while I'm doing that in the background, does anyone want to share what they've been working on? Actually, I do have another update. Um, for those of you who have been asking for the Daz Avatar animation blueprint, I've done it for you. Um, today, it's up on this Google Drive. And I can show you very quickly what my um, control rig looks like. It's super simple. But um, this is the link. Um, there is a control rig, skeleton, and the avatar comes with it as well. You just have to import your Daz avatar to the skeleton. And I know I haven't really dealt with Daz that much, but I know that um, it also has different skeletons. So what we're working with today is a Genesis 8.0 one female character I believe. Um, I got this from another user and I just thought I could build it off that. Um, so hopefully that's uh, that will be useful but currently we've covered Daz, Metahumans, Mixamo and VRMs which to me are the kind of most commonly used characters. I hope that will be very useful. Um, but yeah does anyone want to share their screen on what they're working on? I'm going to build this OSC up really quickly from Mo media pipe to my current VTuber um, Unreal file. But yeah, if you feel brave, please feel free to share your screen. Yeah, I can share my screen. Hold on, let me Yay. show you this. Yay. I'm going mm. to full screen. That's Let's give you that screen. All right. Well, here's my fella. He's super choppy. Mm -hmm. I think it's uh the media pipe is rocking my GPU pretty hard. Yeah, nice. Um, um that is the XR an XR animator, isn't it? That is, yes, yeah. it is. You are correct. Yeah, so what, what is tanking the FPS is really the receiver. Um, however, I've asked like a um, programmer and he says the best way to kind of optimize this is, is only through blueprints because we need all the rows of data we have from XR Animator potentially. So um, he's going to help me look at it a bit later this month as well. Um, oh, dear Lord, look at it. Oh, my God. Oh, God. Uh, it looks like your application is minimized, it says, or you stopped sharing. Oh, no, it's, um, 
It's a standalone. Oh, it's standalone. Okay, let me. Yeah, I built the or I built the executable oh. for it. It says your stream is paused. It might be. What is that? Why is it? Why is that happening? All right. Screens. No, oh, wrong screen. This screen. Screens. Oh. Screens. Nice. There we go. Is that better? Yeah. Yay. Um. Yeah. So. Yeah. This is a. Uh, oh, I'm trying to. There we go. This is just a standalone application, and I've got this stupid this thing running as well. Um, but yeah, it's real choppy. It's like I mean, I got a thirty eighty, but it's screaming. Yeah, the rest of my computer's just fine. Like everybody and else is happy. It also tanks because you're sharing your screen at the moment, and that's yeah, like that's, that's probably layer. true. That's also an extra layer, but yeah. My FPS isn't great already when I'm using FPS. So I would probably try using MediaPipe. Um, I might have that plug-in. Uh, not plug-in. The MediaPipe for you thing? Yeah, I have that animation blueprint for it as well. Or, mm. Yeah, I'll have a look. Mm. I'll have a look. I don't actually remember what I did for it. But, mm. um, this, this, looks, this is looking great. And all the blend shapes are working well for you. Yeah, they, uh, oh man, that was a pain in the butt to figure out, but I figured it out. Nice. Uh, like, I can blink and I can move my mouth, but it's, I gotta, like, amplify it a little bit because the mouth doesn't move enough to really notice. Yeah, if you're mod modifying curve or editing morph targets, you can also multiply it uh, above one, mm -hmm. and it really exaggerates. Um, the face blend shape itself. So. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, that's a good call. Um, but yeah, that's my little filler. I did have a question about oh the webcam. How do I get this thing to work? I have to buy a license. I probably have to buy a license. I might have like a test license. It's good for another day, but. This isn't working. Do I need to do anything else besides drop it in there? Um, this isn't the virtual webcam isn't working. You mean? Yeah, yeah. I can't. I don't see it in my little list of webcams or devices. Or um, yeah, I've got NDI here. Oh wait, it's not doing NDI. Never yeah, mind. It's doing virtual webcam, so you can enable it on Discord. Yes. Yeah, but I don't see it. Let me just have it, uh, maybe deactivate that and start again. See if it works. Uh, no, I'll, I'll poke around with it later. We don't have to debug it with everybody else watching, but you get the idea. Yeah, super cool. Yeah. Amazing. Thank you for your help with figuring out, like, the face and all that stuff. Or, like, getting that hooked yeah, up. Yeah, like, that's really fun. That that bit is really fun, but yeah, I'm glad yours is a v VRM character. It does make it a bit easier to to work. To work yeah, on. I got really lucky that the client just happened to have that laying around. I never even heard of a VRM before this. <laughs> it is a it is a Japanese file format, I think. Um, um. Yeah, pretty cool. Um, amazing. So I'm yep. just I'm just looking at. My touch designer file as well. There we go. Yeah, the touch designer stuff is is really cool. It would be fun to see what kind of fun you could have with the data that comes out of that. Yeah, I think there's a lot we can do with it. And we can use... The, the most fun, I think, currently are the category names and... Uh, like I love the image classifications. I'd love to do stuff like that, but um, yeah. Let me. Maybe you could spawn a cat if you see a cat in the background or something like that. 
Yeah, that'll be cool. That will definitely drive my computer crazy. <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, Cup running it through like a large uh, LLM mocap. Oh. Hmm. Oh, thanks, um, thanks, Lucas. I just saw your message on Mocap for research. This is great. I need to learn how they do it. Mocap for all is not in my list yet, so great to see you. So let me go back to my screen what are your yeah pc specs oh my pc specs are 3080 ti but i've got quite a fancy um i've got quite fancy rams i think it's it's quite it's like 32 gig uh but i have two I don't actually use it well. Um, wait, actually, I don't know. Let me have a quick look at my specs. Um, it's just an Alienware laptop, but I have some custom specs on it. That makes it quite interesting. Um, it's this one. Yeah, so I have... I see. Yeah, I have 32 and 32. Uh, I know a 4080 would be great, but um, because I was working with my other friend who has a 4070, but because he only has 16 gig RAM, he's playing with memory a lot with C++ development, and so still not enough. I just don't know what n enough is nowadays, but it seems like it's never enough. Um going to have a look so i was really interested in the blend shapes from my touch designer so i'm going to bring it up again i'm going to pull this out which is blend shapes and i'm going to look into it what what it is that is a blend shape face points face points merge the green out is landmarks to chop and we're getting setting up face landmarks. Landmarks to chop again. Let's see. Okay. Landmarks to chop, chop, chop. Cool. We get that. Nice, amazing. So it looks like. It looks like an AR kit kind of set set up, same as before. I guess what's weird is that the floats are on the left, and I don't remember that's how they were done. Um, but it's fine. It just means I have everything. So we have all the blend shapes. We can send this out to. We can send this out to, basically right away to Unreal, like our last tutorial, so I'm literally just going to do that. I don't know what, what's going to happen to my computer. Chop. Um, OSC out. OSC out, what do I have to do? Select. Oh, sorry, it's in. out. Nice. Sending on local host network port 10k. Then we're gonna get to Unreal. Um, I've been trying to figure out how to map the small incoming spout texture to a character rig. So the spout texture is mapped to a material you mean? Um, Using TV to turn the world positions to RGB pixels, sending them over spout. Oh, 
Oh. Sounds quite complicated. So, to 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 me, spout are textures and frames. But I know what you mean. Return the world positions. Sorry, pixels from the world. Do you have a work? Do you have a working version of that? I can definitely help with the blueprint side. I'm actually not too good at touch designer anyway, but it'll be super cool. Um, but from what I'm reading, um, cause, um, <laughs> when I when I was still kind of like learning touch designer, the first exercises were always like sorting pixels or like, um, uh, using RGB values. For different things it sounds like what you're trying to do is similar to that which is pretty cool um but yeah i don't i don't know exactly if that's what you mean but it'd be great if you have a working version I'd love to see what's happening uh, almost maybe maybe i could put something together to share that i don't yeah okay well it's uh, there's a there's an there's actually an owl they're doing it with the Niagara particles there's an owl tutorial where they're pulling particles over from touch designer with some spout using using I think four different spout. Yeah, that'd be really cool. Mm -hmm. Um, to character. So the character points are. Is that transforms for the? Yeah, transforms of the skeleton. Okay, I can show you what. These blueprints look like the ones there. Um, these characters are using. Um, but yeah, feel free to share a screen. I love to know what you're doing. Sounds amazing. Um, while that's happening, I don't know if you saw earlier, but I tried sending from Touch Designer to Unreal. Um, it was fine. <laughs> it was fine, but literally crashed my. It didn't crash my computer exactly, but it was super heavy. And it was also sending only zeros, so don't know what happened there. Um let's say track only one face though. Huh. Just it was super heavy, so I don't know what happened there. But yeah, definitely if you're, um, I can show you, so I think there are two things, um, that I can help with, with, which is, incoming spot. I wonder if the easiest way is to, to, to have the data, the da a data table or a map already inside touch designer um because if in if it is a texture anyway the 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 best way kind of to work on the texture real time is through touch designer i think getting you doing texture stuff in unreal i'm actually not sure if that's the best way to go about it but i'm sure there's a way so it will be through materials um the material editor which is completely possible yeah um then with character rigs so um, i think this will be similar to just blueprint communications between blueprints so let's say i have an it'll be maybe quite similar to this i have an extra blueprint which is um OSC blueprint so it's taking information from touch designer right now um 
but this could literally be anything that it that it, it could be like a data processor blueprint or it could be a receiver blueprint or it can just be a blueprint that sets um these maps data maps or um string maps so what i've done here from touch designer it was literally just a chop out node um and in unreal engine i've created an ose server and then on message received um i've basically just gotten all the ose message floats and added them to the mocap data string float map so on the left side is string on the right side is float um i think that was essentially that was essentially it um and once we have that we have this mocap data string which is a very useful kind of variable to use and reference in our other blueprints and um i guess similar to what you're doing i'm getting this data and mapping it to my character and in there you basically need to do most things in an animation blueprint um So then we can do stuff like, um, oh, I think it's still in a bit of a lag. What was this? Mm, I think, think my Unreal isn't responding. But I'm trying to think how to get get a texture and then texture unreal engine texture rgb values it's responding now i think yeah good um each texture I don't know if I'm googling the right thing. Yeah. So, are you getting the RGB value by basically getting each pixel? Accessing pixel. I feel like the easiest way would still be do that in touch designer like get all the rgbs in touch designer and then just send that send that over um but I guess the image is yeah yeah if if you're a programmer i'd love to know what's the best way to like send osc messages in this in an efficient way or like because um i've just been like spamming <laughs> spamming in real and i don't think that's the most useful the way the way i see it is the i don't know if it's heavier this way or that way but it seems like you can read yeah, you can read all the channels inside Touch Designer already and then send that over. So there's more visibility to it. Uh, whereas in the material editor, if you were to see something, I don't know if they have a watch this value kind of function that you can like watch the values happen. Um, yeah, I don't. I don't really do shaders or material stuff, so it's yeah, but it sounds like a good there's the no that's okay no it sounds it sounds exciting, it sounds really exciting. I'm trying to think like if. So let's say a variable, could this be a texture actually? I've actually never used a texture as a variable. Texture 2D. 
for us to hear. Then what can we get from there? Get RGB curve. I actually don't know what this is. <laughs> Float. Yeah, so let's say whatever this variable is, um, if you get a map, that's great. If you get a texture, that's also great. You just need to end up getting, ideally, the shape. It's really easy to access the shape of data if it comes in a map. Um, and it has, then you can find each um because i don't know if there's any kind of like design to the system but let's say each pixel represents a bone um because it makes sense if a pixel is rgb and then the rgb r x y z positions yeah yeah exactly so if that's the case then i guess like work Yeah. I agree. I think I think that's a great idea. So I might do that as well. Um so spouting I guess spouting you already know how to do that within um within touch designer and unreal. Oh, I see. Yeah, so <laughs> um so the off world stuff is um pretty nice. It is literally a an actor that's spout receiver and then um you can just add that um uh add that and then put in uh and then it'll just basically use first available um sender basically and then you can assign you can kind of assign a render target and then slap it on something for example let me do that let me do that now Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, spell. Let's say, so now I've just created a spout out and um, oops. So now we've received this as a texture inside Unreal. Um, and then we want to should make this smaller resize this resolution uh 8 make this smaller and what do we want to do we want to get this texture and then do something to it so let's do texture 2d um, maybe we can find text render target fill target uh, maybe it has to be a render target uh, render target 2d Oh, sorry, it's in the wrong place. Then set this as sorry, 
do it again. Target new var and the target to do. Get set this as render. New texture tile, new texture and the target 2D. Yeah, that's it, I thought. I'm not sure why texture, texture render target 2D. I'm gonna just wait. <laughs> um, still don't know why though. Texture. Sorry, I'm just looking for what this is. Render target. Render target. Sorry. Um Oh, I don't know why. I don't know why it's not showing up, but I'm guessing you'd need to use the material editor to get all the data or to set data or create an actor blueprint that takes a texture and reads it and sets um, float from it. Uh, so the best way to do it, how to get RGB value, get RGB from Texture and real engine. By specifying UV coordinate plate. Read rendered target pixel. Okay, so there is a read render target pixel node, which means you might be able to do that directly. I'm guessing this in this happens in an actor blueprint. So I'm gonna just create one. And then Read render target pixel. It's great. Already came with everything. Uh, and we have this actor begin play. Uh, and then print string. So the RGBAs are here. Nice. 
So let's see what we get if we add this to here. Um, hopefully I'm not sending. Nice. Yeah, so I don't know if you saw that, but that was a quick way to get all the values. And so I would probably do it this way, um, have a reader, have an actor blueprint that reads the incoming, uh, incoming spout texture. And then, and then, actually this could be done inside your character blueprint. So for me, this would be the Mixamo character NVIDIA blueprint. Then it makes it easier to pass just values into the animation blueprint. Um, with that in mind, let's have a look at the animation blueprint to see if we can just literally read pixel. Oh yeah, amazing. So it's already here. Read render target pixel and then just RGBA basically. Done, I think. I didn't realize everything's already decided this early on, but <laughs> let's say we have um, the anim graph. This is where you set the X, Y, Z of, let's go with the left hand, left hand. So I'm going to paste in read render target. Oh, I see. Never mind. So we'll still have to create. So we'll have to set like a that um we'll we'll have to set this inside the event graph and then just use the same variable. Um so event blueprint update animation. We do it at the end. Uh no, let's do it at the beginning read render target pixel brick struct uh, and then I guess this will be hand so create a hand transform and this is a a hand transform is a translation, actually. Sorry, translation. Just gonna use that instead. Then, literally just this set. Sprite to vector. <laughs> make vector make transform how can I make this yeah being lazy RGB So now we use this for that. Great, it's already it's already um done it. Um sorry. Do you remember what um what's the best what's what's the center Nice. So I think we're already because um we have we've got this texture now, and then we've got that as well. My OSC blueprint is needs to deactivate now. And that's not working.
trying to find the zero, <laughs> the zero zero pixel. That's usually left left upper corner, no. I'm just trying to find where it is. Just a quick couple look. Yeah, you can see it. Amazing. Mm -hmm. Great, yeah. 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 Okay. Mm hmm Yeah. So... Fine. Yeah. Yes. Um, I guess um so some maybe a like a minor minor tip on when I was streaming my animation blueprint is that you always have to Uh, sort the bones from the ends of the limbs to the core of the body so that the rotations don't um I actually don't know what the values are and if they include rotation seems like it might be a translation thing only at the moment but um if it's rotation it has to rotation from out in because otherwise it will be weird so the way I've done my animation blueprints are that the fingers rotate first and then the wrist and then shoulders so they don't bend the wrong way if you know what i mean um yeah 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 i think i think that's probably that's probably the way to do it so yeah just on the first try i guess um let me Oh, I see. What? Yeah, that would be great. And you can easily spout two, spout two textures, um, and get that over. Um, really? I guess the best. We'll have to see, like, what's the best way to do all of them, because currently. Oh, I guess we can just loop it, and then you can put in the X and Y, uh, as an in uh. as variables and then set mm, and then set them yeah that's gonna be quite yeah I, I think the best way I mean if I were to do it I would just do it the most manual way yeah the first time create Um, um, so if you've seen this, this is actually pretty efficient and it's, it looks crazy, but it's actually fine. This is not the bad bit. The bad bit is the receiver. So, um, so if you're using spout, you're, you're going to have no problems communicating, um, with unreal efficiently. And then it's down to whether this is efficient or not. So, uh incre incredibly inefficient so that's what it says <laughs> so if you have to do this for how many pixels was that in the image it was like five by five times five or maybe like eight times eight kind of thing you have to do this 64 times 
Yeah, if you have to do that 25 times, this says it's, yeah, so it says it's incredibly inefficient here and slow anyway. So, uh, so maybe that'll be hard because you also have to set all these different variables for this to work. Um, for, um, so may maybe try both. I mean, this is such an interesting workflow. I haven't actually thought about it, but I might actually experiment on this next week. Sounds amazing. Sounds very new media. Needs <laughs> and sounds like new media art session. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh I think it sounds great. Also, uh from experience, I haven't actually streamed location or like the transforms of the bones at all. I've been always using um just the rotation and that's been really good. Um the reason is I didn't want it to move around the world anyway. I want it to be like a VTubing character. So if that helps, you can try with just one rotation base texture um and then set yeah and then set how how can maps work let me have a look if we create a map what would it look like? i don't know if it's easier just to set add everything to a map so although you're running more of but this in maybe a loop you can only you can set everything or add everything to a map maybe then you don't have to set individual variables um but then it means that in the anim graph you'll have to find each row and then put it back in Yeah, I imagine you can do a loop on this. Uh, let's have a look here. Read a value as RGB colors from render target using integer pixel. So what is 8 bit channel? Mm. Yeah. Possibly. Yeah. You'd still have to run through, I guess you'd still have to run through that through the pixels. Um it's not too bad. If it's twenty five, it's actually pretty decent, you know? And twenty five wouldn't would wouldn't tank your computer as badly as XR animator, for example, I think. Um because if you Yeah <laughs> exactly. Twenty five is decent. I love this. I love this idea. I'm gonna try it for so um I mean I'm actually gonna try it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. These ones. Yeah. To an image. And so, it's, yeah. It's, um, yeah, instead of streaming the, instead of OSCing the chop, I, I spout the top. <laughs> <laughs> uh interesting yeah that's an that's a nice way to think about so let's have a look what this is yeah exactly these are x's uh, it's sorted really funny the way the the way
It looks like the media pipe pose tracking is 2D or is UV base is XY. Um, so I've been using the body tracking from NVIDIA, this one. Uh, body track, and it has a 3D. That's good. So that's tanking. That's tanking currently the OSC, but I love your idea of the um of the spout sending. That's Mm hmm Yeah, yeah. Yeah, like like Yeah. Okay, cool. Um do it this way. I've all and also the perform mode. Yeah. Amazing. I've got a new I've got a new idea now, really inspired by this. Yeah, I'm going to I'm going to look at spouting. So my last experiment was on the Nvidia body track, but OSCing to Unreal. Next week I'm going to do Nvidia body track to spout uh, spout to Unreal and then break that XYZ to um to a bone. I've got so many animation blueprints to make. If you <laughs> actually I, I could do all these animation blueprints if anyone um on the call just tells me what they're working on then i can just do the animation blueprint <laughs> and and you guys can work on these interesting things um workflows this is super cool i think this has given me a new new ideas for what what we should do in the future because maybe osc just doesn't work as comms it's like we use video i don't know we use video streaming so much and it's so useful and it's so efficient. Maybe we should use it for like mocap because there's there's also another thing we were thinking about, which was something to do with um when I didn't know too much about OSC about like wrapping mocap data in uh in things anyway and sending that and sending that over to other computers. So maybe like a multiplayer mocap thing could be quite fun via video calls. But yeah, amazing. Um very, very cool. Yeah, very cool and inspiring uh stuff. Yeah. Yeah, that'll be cool. We'll be all sending each other vertex animations and uh and textures and just all animating worlds. <laughs> That's so well. Should we do that once? We should all stream um something and I'll take I've actually never done NDI across I've only done it local, but I've actually never done it in uh across um is that called NDI bridge? Should we try that? That's so wild. If I, but <laughs> I don't know. Uh, we should try doing like a a semi streaming session. We're all streaming to one computer and then just spawn things out of it. Um, use textures to generate animation. It's a really cool idea. Really cool, nice series as well. okay okay i've got yeah great everyone gets to be like a type of cat avatar as well um but yeah this is so cool thanks for thanks for doing this <laughs> um yeah everyone gets a type of character i, I will sleep tonight i've actually slept quite a lot recently but you've because um 
I was I was missing out on ideas, but now I'm full of ideas. Thanks to thanks to you, Michael. I'm gonna I'm gonna have a great week of experimentation. This has given me so much hope on streaming mocap as well because I don't believe in the suits too much because no one no one will like personally won't buy them. Um, but yeah, it's given like video streaming a fresh look um because we can do so many things in touch designer very cool yeah please yes please loading yay yep that now Uh, are you are you using OS you said you're using OSC oh touch OSC yeah 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 I remember that cool Yeah. 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 Yeah, it's great. Also, um, have you heard of Zig Sim? It's this. I don't know if they're still around, but they had. amazing it's kind of like touch osc but it's a japanese version um they've got really cool stuff um like pressure proximity mic levels and they've got an ar kit integration as well and now ndi um super useful super useful as well i haven't i haven't used touch osc recently um in recent years but uh really cool I feel like, yeah, I feel like it's making a come, like, I feel like a lot of these foundational new media tools are making a comeback, but people aren't making really good uses of it now. Um, hmm. Uh, yep, yep. Is this Daz to Unreal? Is this the one? I need to I need to study this. This is great. I'm gonna put it in my in my study in my study map. Um yeah, it'll be really cool. It'll be really cool to see how how to do many characters because I know this happens in editor anyway, like um that you can retarget with the many um really easily. 
yeah, I need to study this. Mega grants. Um, wow, so many amazing things to look at. Yeah, we've got this one. I definitely will study this and review this soon. Um, did you get it for, is the interactive license 50 US dollars? Is that the one? Um, oh, okay. Yeah. Uh, that's great because I'm not I'm not like a dad's user. That's why I never looked into it. But another user asked for the dad's animation blueprint, and I just thought, oh, why not make it from scratch? But um, yeah, I feel like this this is better. I feel like this this is probably the solution to what I've been looking at. It must be this one then. Let me start this about the bridge. Um, Ooh. Mm, have a try with the media pipe for you um one because I think I don't have enough knowledge about what makes things slow or what's heavy um still so I'm 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 still learning about that but um latency yeah i need to study what really causes latency like communication with osc is fine but the messages are heavy as as you saw uh last time media pipe already takes away a few frames for being heavy but yeah um this is cool i'll have a look i'll have a look yeah, the Mixamo thing could work. Yeah, I've noticed um, also, so with Daz, I'm currently struggling to look at their face. Um, <laughs> I'm struggling to look at their face blend shapes because each, um, I think I have this character in here that another user sent over to me. And the struggle is this skeletal mesh has like the head has like four types of skeletal mesh and so that's um and all of them have different blend shapes yeah thank you so much for joining um yeah lucas hope to see you soon um but yeah i'm struggling because there's just way too many blend shapes to work for manually so i need to start looking for ways to um to sort out blend shapes, not manually one by one, as I've done them stupidly in my animation blueprints. But yeah, maybe something, maybe something more streamlined. But yeah, would love to get everyone's ideas on it. But yeah, I think it's been it's already been two hours. So thanks so much for your time. Um, I'm sure it's late where you are. Um, if you're also in the same time zone. But yeah. Um, thanks so much everyone for joining and definitely let's hopefully meet each other again next week if everyone's around I'm definitely going to try the texture the texture idea that's a really really solid workflow I think and it's also neat to look at when things are just wrapped in pixels it's very nice but yeah thanks so much Michael and thank you everyone else um um yeah see you soon thank you bye, bye.